YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino, you're not going to stay this close, don't worry. You're not going to stay this close, don't worry. And we have a beer that was picked up for me by my buddy from work, Shane. So thank you very much, Shane. Uh, he actually went out to Cherry Plains, New York, to New York's first farm brewery, to pick up uh, some Ancient Gruet Ale. He loves the Ancient Gruet Ale. I actually had the Ancient Gruet Ale. It's an amazing beer. And it was great to get it, but when he went this time, he's like, do you want me to pick you up another bottle of that? And I said, you know what I'd love you to do? Pick me up something I haven't had yet, because I loved that beer, and as much as I loved that beer, I love trying new things. So he did. He picked me up another beer, and it is right here. It's the Beer Diviners, the Divinator. And the Divinator is a double-hopped IPA at 11% alcohol. So you're you're at the ABV of uh, of a double IPA or arguably the new triple IPAs that are out there. So I mean you're you're at that that ABV. Uh, what's the IBU? I don't know. It says double hopped IPA. I don't know if it's uh, two different hops. If it's double the amount of hops of say their normal IPA. If it's dry hopped. If it's wet hopped. If it's I don't know any of that because it's not on here, and I like to go into things as blind as I can. That wasn't a vision joke, fuck you guys. Sorry for the language to anyone that doesn't know this channel, but it's not a blind joke, okay? I say that right before, and I, I do apologize, I realize the lighting is not the greatest in here tonight. Just don't care, right? Just don't care. Let's uh, actually... A little bit better? A little bit better? Okay. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, all blind jokes aside, uh, brewed and bottled by, and here, here's another part of that blind joke, I don't know if that says Bly Hollow, uh, the brewing, I'm just gonna call him the beer diviner, that's it. Okay, there's a reason this double hopped IPA is named after our brewmaster, after he was given the title beer diviner by Dano Elders in West Africa, our brewer began his quest to bring good beer to good people. He has been divining brews and bringing community together ever since. Don't get too cozy, though, because with 100% New York growing hops and an 11% ABV, well, alcohol content, not ABV, that's just my Canadianism coming out, uh, this potent brew packs a double punch into those, again, that are new to the channel. I'm blind, okay, I'm legally blind, that's why I said no blind. Anyway, uh, so thank you very much, Shane, for picking this up. And it does say, you know, he's bringing good people to, to good beer and all that, and the funny thing about that is, actually, uh, Shane told me he got a chance to chat with him for about half an hour, and that he was a really learned guy, a really, uh, whew, can smell that already, a really... A learned man, a really well-spoken man, and well-read man, and he was somebody he enjoyed chatting with. So, uh, that's always great to know. I mean, it's it's always good if a beer that you enjoy is made by somebody that you could feel was a good person, or you do feel was a good person, or that you got to chat with and you enjoyed, because it just makes, it just makes the whole situation better. A little bit of flex on the outside of the glass, not the inside. Wow, is that a thick, thick beer. Wow. I'm expecting to see sea monkeys floating around in here, you know. Uh, double hopped. Uh, super, super thick. Like, look at that beer. Look at that beer. That is so hazy that it's just... Now, when I hold it up to the camera like this, it almost looks like a, like a honey color, like a deep... Uh, uh, deep amberish hue, uh, but when I hold it back here to myself, and maybe it's my pink shirt vibrating off of it, let's just turn it a little bit here, and... yeah, okay, uh, almost juicy, almost to the, like, Vermont-style, super thick, uh, opaque juiciness, but not quite, just super, super haze, starting that opaque hue, uh, but again, a kind of brassy, bronzy, uh, there's a copper pipe above my head, I guess, you could say it's kind of coppery. The head, uh, a beautiful off-white head, beautiful, beautiful, thick head. Tiniest bit of snap, crackle, pop. Not that it really matters to me. I just like doing that. Just like doing that. Scent. 
Oh my lord, that smells good. Okay, so New York growing hops, that does not mean that it's not, uh, well, it doesn't mean anything. You can grow most hops most places unless they're, uh, unless they're trademarked and such, um, unless they are, are legally not allowed to be grown anywhere else. So, I mean, the, they could have almost anything, uh, hop-wise. Sorry, I'm just, I had this at an angle earlier where the lighting was perfect and ever. Uh, I'm, 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 no, no, gotta get back to the beer, I digress too much, this is why I need people with me, right? So, out of the glass, some orange, some orange, some mango, a little bit of a piney note at the back, and it has that, uh, oh, it has that sweet, syrupy resininess that a lot of American IPAs give off to me. But with the mango and with the orange and with the little bit of pine, it smells beautiful. Out of the bottle, out of the bottle, I get a little bit of a uh, little bit of roasted malt, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of roasted malt. That orange again, uh, again the pine. Not picking up the mango out of the bottle, but again that that syrupy sweet uh, resininess. I'm actually surprised Shane even tried this, to be honest, because he tried it and said he really enjoyed it. And uh, knowing his thoughts on hops, I'm surprised he tried it. Oh, now it looks like the Vermont-style juiciness, now that I've poured some more of the bottom out. Oh, let's try this. Cheers, guys. Okay, so, when I drink beers... I don't like my beers cold. Uh, they sit on the floor in the basement before I drink them. Usually for a day or two. Um, this I just got today, so it hasn't even sat down here for a day or two. So this is actually warmer than I usually would drink it. Is there any faults I taste? Absolutely not. Does it matter if I taste them? No, because you might still love the beer. Who gives a shit, right? Um, no faults. Mouthfeel? Nice and heavy. This is a... This is not a little thin, as Paul from PA Brew News would say. This is not a little thin. Medium to full bodied. Moderate carbonation. Syrupy sweet. It gives almost the... It gives almost the Imperial Stout uh, sticky lips. Like, it, it's just that kind of beer. It's, 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 it's a beautiful beer because of that. I mean, it just makes... It makes the entire situation, it makes the t entire experience different. Now, double hopped IPA. Is it as hoppy as some of the things that I've, I've tasted before? Well, it's no alpha fornification, but that was 2100 IBU. Um, if I had to guess, and I mean it's hard to guess IBUs because mattering what hops you use matters how how much they come off as the bitter and all that, but if I had to guess, I would guess this around 70. I'd guess it around 70 IBU. It does have a little bit of that that resiny, uh, sucked on a pine cone, ate, ate a caffeine pill bitterness right on the back of the tongue. It has that caffeine pill uh, resiny, just full-on bitterness that people people go goo goo after. Uh, I'm more a juicy IPA guy myself. Again, I'm more like a New Zealand IPA or a Vermont style IPA or a New England style IPA. That being said, that resininess isn't overpowering. It actually <laughs> mixes well with this beer. Nice caramel forefront, nice malty forefront, and a little bit, a little bit of that uh, slightly darker roastiness to the malt. That resininess, a little bit of pine oil, pine sap. Uh, what tastes like a uh, grapefruit peel, like the pith, the pith, the piss. Uh, some of you will know what that's about. Um, yeah, but like, like I took a grapefruit and I bit right into the peel. It just has that that oily. Uh, 
a slightly bitter, slightly citrus flavor. Alcohol warming, it's 11%, so you'd expect some, there is some. The majority of the citrus I pick up is that grapefruit peel, but there is a little underlie of a nice orange flavor in there. Uh, mango was only on the nose, I don't taste it. So, citrus, both orange and, uh, and grapefruit peel. Caramel, roasty malts, uh, pine oil, resiny, uh, resiny, sappy, caffeine pill bitterness, uh, which kind of dries out the back of the palate, kind of makes the beer moorish, but mixing with the, mixing with the two citrus flavors, as well as the caramel taste and the malty taste, which actually are apparent in this beer, it works really well. Uh, bitterness, as I said, moderate. I mean, uh, I'm not a big guy for a lot of American IPAs, and I actually quite enjoy this. This isn't a bad beer. This isn't a bad beer at all. It's not one of my top IPAs of all time. It really isn't, but I love this beer at the same time. Like, uh, it's 11% alcohol, and I can probably do this. When you can do that with an 11% alcohol beer, it's a real well-made beer. Go to 10 on this beer. As I said, I really love the beer. I don't love it as much as I loved the um, the Ancient Gruet. Don't love it as much as that. Um, I kind of wish he had had bottles of the Oat Stout, because that would have probably been right up my alley, uh, being that I love my stouts. Um, on this, though, I'd give it an 875. This is a damn fine beer. There's nothing wrong with it. I can't complain about it at all. The alcohol warming is not too much. The resininess is not too much. The bitterness is not too much. The sweetness is not too much. The smell is amazing. The look is amazing. And the taste is fucking awesome. Again, to anyone new to the channel, sorry. I swear. I'm not your... Yeah. I'm not, yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you, Shane.